Good day to each and everyone. I am Mary Claire Flores from BS Ed Sciences TA. So for today's video, I will discuss to you the chapter 4.3 which is keeping time. The measurement of time is based on the rotation of Earth. And throughout most of human history, time has been reckoned by positions of the sun and the stars in the sky. And only recently have mechanical and electronic clocks over this function in regulating our lives. So the length of the day. So did you know that the most fundamental astronomical unit of time is the day? And it is measured in terms of the, as what I said earlier, the rotation of Earth. And then there is, however, more than one way to define the day. And we will tackle that, that in this video. So in this video, we will differentiate uh, the solar day versus the sidereal day. Okay, so we define solar day as a Earth's rotation period as defined by the position of the sun in the sky and the time between successive passages of the sun through the meridian. So in other words, or in simple words, um, uh, the solar day, it is the Earth's rotation with respect to the sun. Okay, so I have here a picture of a solar day. And did you know, class, that a solar day is slightly longer than a sidereal day? It's because Earth not only turns but also moves along its path around the sun in a day. And did you tell us a picture? We observe the picture observed. Suppose we start when Earth's orbital position is at day 1. Nakita niyo bang at day 1? With both the Sun and some distant star located in the direction indicated by the long white arrow um, pointing left. Okay? Directly in line with the zenith for the observer on Earth. So when Earth has completed one rotation with respect to the distant star and is at day 2, the long arrow again points to the same distant star. Nakikita niyo ba yon? However, notice that the, because of the movement of Earth along its or, orbit from day 1 to 2, the Sun has not yet reached, hindi, hindi pa niya na reach yung position above the observer. And then, to complete a solar day, Earth must rotate an additional amount equal to 1 over 365 of a full turn. And then the time required for this extra rotation is 1 over 365 of a day, about 4 minutes. So the solar day is about what? 4 minutes longer than the sidereal day. So in the other hand, we have sidereal day. Okay, compare na ba natin? Okay, let's see. Okay, so we define sidereal day as a Earth's rotation by the position of the stars in the sky. So the time between successive passages of the same the same star through the meridian. So dito, compare na natin na yung solar day. It is Earth's rotation with respect to the sun. But here in sidereal day, Earth's rotation with respect to the stars in the sky. Okay, so a measurement of the sidereal day is made by nothing the time at which a particular star passes the yes, celestial meridian or directly overhead on two successive nights. So on Earth, a sidereal day lasts for 23 hours, 56 minutes, and 4.091 seconds, which is slightly shorter than the solar day measured from noon to noon. Yun yun yung sinasabi ko kanina, na mas uh, longer yung solar day uh, kesa um, sidereal day. Okay, so in addition, we have apparent solar time. So, ano nga ba ito? So, apparent solar time uh, as time reckoned by the actual position of the sun in the sky or 
during the night. It's positioned below the horizon. And this is kind of time indicated by sandals or probably represent the earliest measure of time used by ancient civilizations. But today, we adopt the middle of the night as the starting point of the day and measure time in hours elapsed since midnight. Okay, so although apparent, this apparent solar time seems so simple, but it is not really convenient to use. Why? Because the exact length of an apparent solar day varies slightly during the year. And the eastward progress of the sun in its annual journey around the sky is not uniform because the speed of the earth varies slightly in its elliptic, uh, what do you call this? Elliptical orbit. Yan. Another complication is that Earth's axis of rotation is not perpendicular to the plane of its revolution. Therefore, the apparent solar time does not advance at a uniform rate. And after the invention of mechanical clocks that run at a uniform rate, it becomes necessary to abandon the apparent solar day as a fundamental unit of time. That's why... Yeah, yung apparent, apparent solar time is not very, really convenient to use. We have also mean solar time and standard time. So when we say mean solar time, it is based on the average value of the solar day over the course of the year. And this solar day contains exactly 24 hours and it is what we use in our everyday timekeeping. Do you know that? So, although mean solar time has the advantage of progressing at a uniform rate, unlike what I told you earlier, it is still inconvenient for practical use because it is determined by the position of the sun. For example, yung noon occurs when the sun is overhead, but because we live on around, uh, we live on around Earth, the exact time of noon is different as you change your longitude by moving east or west. But noong 1990s, most of the world using the system of 24 standard time zone. So within each zone, all places keep the same standard time with the local mean solar time of a standard time of a longitude. And then, uh, almost all the countries have adopted one or more standard time zone okay under this um um solar day or in this what they call this standard time we have daylight saving time so it is simple the simply the local standard time of the place plus one hour so it has been, it has been adapted for spring and summer use in most states specifically in the united states so as well as in many countries to prolong the sunlight into evening hours on the apparent theory that is easier to change the time of the government action. And lastly, we have international date line. So, international date line is set by international agreement to run approximately along the 180 degrees meridian of longitude. And the date line runs down the middle of the Pacific Ocean, Although it jags a bit in a few places to avoid cutting groups through no it avoid cutting through groups of islands and through Alaska. So this international so meaning this international date line it is an Im imaginary line that runs along the earth's surface from the north pole to the south pole in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. So when you cross it you either gain or lose, lose a day depending on which way you are traveling. Okay, so that's all. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.